Okay, I got a tag. I'll wait for the tagger thingy to come up first. All right, I'm gonna turn that up. Out loud. Okay, let's take some people. So I'm just taking a few people while we're waiting for people to come in. Okay, who else do I need today? Yes. everyone's busy getting dinner ready and stuff but I'll just tag you just to, to make sure you get the right video when you come back and watch the replay quick chapter today anyway it's a quick chapter yes um, before we get into everything let's just wait for people to come into life I'm just gonna have a drink it's pretty slick ah. okay I'm just getting ready <clears throat> getting myself organized so we went out today and we just come back but an hour ago and I've had a little study of our chapter for today and our chapter is 13 by 14 so when you come in just get your scriptures ready um, <clears throat> yeah so we had a good day today went to take my husband out because he's been pretty much the victim of all my busy life and um, I thought it'd be good to just take him out get him out and get a bit of fresh air and it was good we went to the beach and went to see our grandson and he played a trick on me a, a big you know a bit cheeky that boy um so him and his papa were in the car they're hanging hang around in the car playing around and i was just getting in the car and he went and picked up this lolly i didn't know where the lolly came from <clears throat> but as soon as i sat in the car he goes oh hi mama i oh, hear mama and he came right next to my face and and showed me this lolly. He goes, here, 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 for me to open my mouth, to put it in my mouth. So I went to put it in my mouth, and I said, thank you, Marley, thank you. And then he was laughing and giggling and just went back in the back seat to play around. And then my husband said to me, oh, he picked that up off the floor. <laughs> and I said, Marley, you cheeky. So, <laughs> That was our little afternoon, a bit of fun, and he didn't want to get out of the car when we were leaving, um, which is sometimes not a good thing to go and visit him during the week. We're disrupting his, his time at home. Uh, but we went to take them some lunch, and um, yeah, we went for a ride to the beach. It was a good day, it's a beautiful day outside, actually. I was wondering if I could turn you around to look at it. How about us just swing you around? Let's get out and enjoy that. And while you're looking at that, I have another drink. Ah, lovely. Yeah. So 
fine. I think everyone's busy getting their dinner and they're organized and that's fine. Just come in later when you're ready to jump in and say hi. What else did I have to say? Yes, okay, so a few things I'll say before um, before we get into the live. I was starting to think. <clears throat> so the chapter today is chapter 14, and I'll get on to that very shortly. Um, but before we get on, I'd just like to welcome um, everybody, our new members of the group, please. Um, feel free to navigate yourself through the page and kind of get an idea through the post of what we do here. Um, daily we have support, um, uplifting support, encouraging posts, we have daily lives and um, we pretty much just teach one another in this group and it's really good. Um, so today I put out a post that I'm going to start decluttering the page. If you didn't see that post I suggest you go in and have a look at it because um, what it's saying is that if you haven't been active on the, um, in the group for like, hello Missy. If you haven't been active, I'm just talking about the um, <clears throat> decluttering the group. And it's to me, it reminded me of the story of the Lord's Vineyard and how he maintains the vineyard. And he, he has to do that to maintain the group and make it keep it strong, keep the um, branches strong. Hi, hi, love. Um, you got your dinner finished? <laughs> Are you cooking dinner? I haven't even put our dinner on. No, I don't even know what we're going to I didn't even put anything out for our dinner, so uh, I have to go and suss it up. Maybe it might be corned beef tonight. Um, but yeah, just to go back to what I was talking about. Um, so the Lord always keeps his vineyard tidy. And he needs to do that just to, you know, keep it strong and keep the... I'd like to do that here if, to keep the conversation strong and to keep people engaged. Um, and talking to each other and I even mentioned that we're, we're not friends anymore we're not just acquaintances we are family I like to think that we are family because this past week I've been talking to a few people who've been going through some um, you know not so good days um, but there is hope ahead and I'd like to think that we can do that for each other in this group too and you know normally people do that to each other if they care about each other and that they they do love one another so I'd like to think that we do that here and so, there you go, I need to edit some people out of here who, who are not showing any kind of compassion or anything to each other in this group. Um, who, you know, anyway, just let me know if you don't want to be deleted. I'm just going to delete everyone who hasn't been active for the last two weeks. And I'll maintain that every three, three months. I'll try and be fair, okay? Uh, yes, finish eating. Oh, you follow so on to it. Hi, Jazz. Um, have you organized your dinner yet? I'm just saying that I haven't organized mine. We actually just got back about an hour ago, but it's been pretty full on since we got back. Um, and I've got mutual tonight too. I mean, not mutual, it's youth now. And um, yeah, we'll be heading off to youth um, very soon. So, buzzy, buzzy, buzzy. Yeah, so what you having for dinner, Jazz? Yes, love that we are family. We are all brothers and sisters, absolutely. There is no need for opposition. There is no need for doubt. There is no need for negative thoughts or feelings and even judgment. I think it's best that we, um, you know, treat each other well. Because if it was your, you know, your real family, you wouldn't, you wouldn't ignore them. If you know that they're going through stuff, you can encourage them, uplift them. Let's do it. You know. Um, and and also, I love that your mum was sharing. Um, the beautiful talents on the page. I love that. Let's, let's encourage that. The, I know a few people that are talented on the, in the group. And I think, man, just share, 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 share what brings you joy. How was your day, you guys day out? Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, and I think we needed that break away from home because, like, um, you know, my husband has been very supportive in the things that I do. And I thought, It'd be good for us to just do it, do something that he wants to do. And I think he really enjoyed it today. It's just the beginning of his new journey. Um, so I set aside Wednesdays. Wednesdays we will, um, I'll commit to just doing something that he wants to do. And I think sometimes our husbands do need that. Um, because they're so flooded with everything that the kids want to do or that we want to do. And they their voice is very little or dim. But I think there should be a bit of a balance. We can create that. Us women, we can create that balance. 
Um, yeah, so it was, it was fantastic. We just talked about anything and everything. And as soon as he see me put my phone up, uh, he says, oh, put your phone down. So, yeah, it was a good experience today. And the weather was beautiful. We went to the beach and it was just a crispy day. And there were people fishing and people swimming, taking their dogs for water. Amazing environment. Yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, and I just talked about this little story where we went to see my grandson, uh, Marley. And that cheeky boy uh, was sitting, I was sitting in the car. Oh no, I just got in the car. He was sitting with his papa. And then um, he was hovering over my back with this lolly. And he goes, right next to me, right there. He put it there and he goes, Mama, Mama, here, here, here. And I put the lolly in my mouth and I said, thank you so much, Marley. And then he turned around and he said, uh, oh, well, he was just laughing and giggling and jumped in the back. And then my husband called out, the papa called out and he said, Oh, he picked that up off the ground. And I was like, Molly, you egg. And he was just laughing. He thought it was hilarious. And his papa always thinks it's hilarious when those two gang up on me. So, you just wait. I'll get my revenge back. Um, so, it's been a great day. And, um, yeah, it's been great. Uh, so, yes, I've talked about the... We are family now. I don't think we're friends. We're family. Uh, we talked. To, I talked about the decluttering of the group, yes. Um, please let me know if you don't want to be deleted because I'm just going to empty the place out. Um, and that's if, that's if you haven't been active for two weeks. That, you know, if you can't do it, you know, so often that's okay. But just a like or something like that every now and then is great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, laughing. Yeah, they used to do things, stupid things like that to me all the time. They just gang up on me. You know, but uh, who's the one that does everything for them? Who makes protein balls for Molly? Yeah, I do, not Papa. Cheeky. So cheeky. Okay, so. Um, yes, yeah, so I before we came on here, I did the poll for um, judging, judging others. And I'm really interested to see what people actually think about judging others, if it's okay. Is there um, such a thing as being able to judge or is there, you know, are there conditions of judging? Um, and this is a teaching moment for us and so I might talk about something at the end to kind of like explain. And I'll also post something uh, later on, an article, I think it's in the Enzyme, 2019 Enzyme, about it. And if you have any other um, truthful points about judging others then uh, yeah post it you're most you're most welcome to teach one and you know that's what we do here okay so i tell you what in today's live we're doing third nephi 14 right and it says if i will seek good things from heavenly father i will receive okay those good things so we're looking for good things what are the good things and in today's live that we've got a few verses that need to be well come follow me want us to talk about and i'll go through that after our prayer um but generally in in the live today it's a very short um chapter i just say you know like i did yesterday look for the one verse if there's one verse that you could teach to to your class or to your, to your family to everybody in chapter 14 what is the one verse that you would choose to teach so that's the question I post to you. When you come across that verse, please let us know what it is, okay? Um, and saying that, let's have the prayer and then we can get moving. I love this song. This is Altia. She's my old student. And uh, she's amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, she actually used to get on well with my kids. And um, they used to prank her all the time. The boys used to prank her all the time, but she's lovely. She could always, always handle it. All right, I said prayer. My dear Father in heaven, we thank thee for this wonderful day. We thank thee for the wonderful weather that we have, and we thank thee for the blessings that is uh, provided for us and our families. We pray, Father, at this time as we come before thee, and give thanks and gratitude for this wonderful opportunity to learn together, share with one another, edify each other, and to listen to the Spirit. And to be anxious, 
anxiously engaged in a good cause as we work together to find truth and seek understanding and may be able to um, apply these teachings into our daily lives, help us to find um, the message that Thou has in store for us today. And please help us reach out to others who are in need um, of the gospel and who need some encouraging encouragement in their day. And we're grateful, Father, for all these blessings and say these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. So if you have your scriptures, come follow me. It's asked for us to highlight the verses. There's quite a few, few verses and not as, none of it is the verse that I actually wanted to look at. Okay, so we've got 3rd Nephi chapter 14. Verses 7 to 11, 3 Nephi chapter 14, verse 15 to 20, uh, 3 Nephi chapter 14, 21 to 23, and also 24 to 27. But we'll go through it like we always do. So, look for, this is what we're going to do. Look for the gold. Yeah, look for the gold. Or look for the treasure, or look for the snippets, or the nuggets. Um, in in one verse, okay, one verse that you like. All right, let's do it. You know, I must say that this is really an easier way of getting your scriptures, in, eh? For us, um, we usually read in the morning, and it's always a good way to start the day too. But um, I don't mind coming in and helping others to. Um, get their scriptures and their daily their daily feast feast get their daily feast in okay oh wait did i just run this okay here we go all right chapter 14 13 5 chapter 14 and it says jesus commands judge not ask of god beware of false prophets he promises salvation to those who do the will of the Father. Compare with Matthew chapter 7, about AD 34. Ah, so just a reminder that this is, the, it's, it's as if it's like the Sermon on the Mount, eh, for those in Jerusalem, but this is the version for the, for the Nephites, okay? I'm sure you already know, but just for those who don't know. And here we go, right on cue, here's your mum. Um, this one, we're just about to start. Kaz, all right, can I start? <laughs> Are you ready? You ready to go? Actually, I thought Lehi was here, but now it's just a few. Okay, right, we're about to start. This one, and now it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he turned again to the multitude. Oh. He, he turned again to the multitude and did open his mouth unto them again, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Judge not, that ye be not judged. Hi, Kaz. Hi, Kaz. We just started from verse 1. Um, Jesus had spoken these words. He, he turned again to the multitude and did open his mouth unto them. Again, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Judge not that ye be not judged. Mm. Okay, more about judgment. It's about judgment here. Verse 2. And I actually do like that poll that we put out. It's going to deepen our understanding of what is good judgment and what is not good judgment. Whether we should judge and whether we shouldn't. What do you think? Should we judge? Hmm. Verse 2. For with what judgment ye judge, Ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Hmm, so that's kind of like saying, um, you shall be judged according to what you, how you judge others. Okay, well that's just what it's saying here. Uh, we'll, we'll elaborate um, as we go through. Uh, verse 3. And why beholdest thou, I love this scripture, I really do. Um, and why beholdest thou the mote? that is in thy brother's eye. But considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. I can only imagine, eh, just what it is that he's saying here. 
<laughs> I love that. So why are you looking at that little thing of dust in someone else's eye and there's a big massive maybe boulder of a beam sticking out of your eye? Shame on you. Shame on you that you can't see that. I love that verse. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. You know, and when you're in the work of um, helping others, you have to be very careful of your judgment. You have to be very, very careful of your judgment. Because this thing is saying, let me just read it again. Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? But considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. And I think we do that quite often. It's like we see the fault in someone or even we try and correct them or fix them or whatever it is. When you're in the business of helping others, you can easily look at their faults and forget you have those faults too. Hey, I've done it many times and I still do it. I must admit, but the only person I talk to about, you know, um, making judgments is not. I'll explain it to you later. Yes, righteous judgment. Um, the only person I talk to about it is my husband. I don't go to the my neighbor's house and say, oh, did you know that person? No, I don't do that. And there are a few people who are on this journey with me too. When, we, when we're trying to help someone, we may, might have a conversation about it. I'll explain more about it later, but we're trying to identify what, well, in these verses, it's talking about how you can go and look at somebody else and think, oh, I just want to fix them. And so you go and take the little speckle out of the eye and, in the process, you've got one big mountain of a, a beam sticking out of your own eye. So it's also trying to say to us, um, self-examine yourself, you know, self-examination. Look at yourself first. Look at in there first. <laughs> and around here. And consider the things that will come out of your mouth after that. And consider who you're going to say it to. Um... And I did read an article, and I tell you, I encourage you to read that article too when I, I post it. And it's uh, an article from the inside last year, and it talks about what kind of judgment there is. And there's also, Jazz, the one that you brought up about examining yourself and judging yourself. Sometimes we can be the, um, the worst, the pits at judging ourselves. Sometimes we can really put ourselves in harm's way when we, uh, you know, quite tough on ourselves um, but the article does talk it does explain all of that in detail but judging yourself righteous judgment there is such a thing as um, Tash brought up in the poll righteous judgment and then there's the just straight old gossip judgment and you know that gossip judgment I see it um, often these days and sometimes you know this is the thing about pride because you when you're doing this sometimes you don't realize you're doing it yeah, you kind of like think that you're doing good sometimes when you are doing it. Um, like, what the, the talk that I'll post, it does define, you know, there was present um, uh, Uchtdorf, or now out of Uchtdorf's um, quote about it, and he said, you know, if you are gossiping, if you are hating, and all that kind of language, then stop it, just stop it. And I agree with him, just stop it. If you find yourself... Um, you know, when you self-examine yourself first, you know, with the big thing hanging out of your eye. When you see yourself in that, you are, are going to be better at judging others. Because, you know, but we're talking about righteous judgment here. There's no, we don't have a right to put others down. And it does explain that better inside the, inside the, the uh, what you call it, the article. Let me post it to you later, and when I do post it, read it, uh, let me just tell you, you will see clearly what is good judgment, what is not good judgment, okay? But these are my favorite verses. If I was to give you any gold today, this would be the gold. And let me read it again, okay? So it's verses 3 and 4, 3rd Nephi. And this this was also, like, taught to the people in Jerusalem. This is, and this message is to the Nephites in the Book of Mormon. Um, and very relevant for us today too very re relevant um, and they're not just words that we just oh they felt like putting it in a book and then it's just a book 
No, this is encouragement for us today. This will help us understand what is good and what is not good. Because there's every message in the world out there that's telling you, oh yeah, it justifies what you're doing wrong is right. Everybody says, oh no, that's okay. They have their own opinions, but this is what is truth, you know? And you'll find that once you do it, once you abide by these things, you will know uh, for surety that it is truth, okay? You, you cannot even deny it. But you have to apply it in your life first, and you have to understand it first before you say it's not truth. But I know in my heart that it is true, and I live by these things, honestly, and that's how I know it is true. Okay, All right, let's carry on. So verse 4, it says, Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Hmm? Look in the mirror. Verse 5, Thou hypocrite, first cast the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall thou see clearly to cast the mote out of thy brother's eye. And just pause there for a second. You know, we, even as family members, sometimes we think it's our job to correct each other. And yes, there's a loving way of doing it. And yes, there's also a not loving way of doing it. And there's also, oh, here we go. Belinda's got something. Fault finding, you know, there's, there's a bit of that too. Okay, Moroni 7, 14 to 18. Great verses for righteous judgments. Good, thank you. Um, verse 15 says, It is given unto you to judge, that ye may know good from evil. And the way to judge is as plain, that ye may know with a perfect knowledge as the daylight is from the dark. Okay, thank you, Kaz, for sharing that. Um, great insight, great scripture too. Um, so, it is given to, unto you to judge. So we are meant to judge, yeah? That you may know good from evil, okay? So I guess that too, when you are doing that, when you are judging, I think you get a feeling inside whether you know that it's the right thing to be doing. And Jez, you did talk about, um, you know, righteous judgment in the poll. I think you know, or good comes from God. If you feel that it is serving um, a good purpose, then you will know that it is right and it is true. And the only way that you will know is if you actually do it. And if you get good feelings from it, good result, yes, it's good. Well done. And if it's uh, like you know it's the stuff where you're putting someone down or looking at her dress. It, and I know, like, um, I know that there are people that actually do that kind of thing. And I may have done that too before. Um, thank you for inviting. Have to catch up after. Yeah, no problem, Jazz. That's okay. I know you got the kids. Um, you have to read all of those verses to get the, the gist of it. Sorry, yes. Yes, all right, let's go, carry on. Um, thou hypocrite, all right, here we go. Verse five, thou hypocrite, first cast the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt thou see clearly to cast the mote out of thy brother's eye. Verse six, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under, your, under their feet, and turn, and turn again, and rend you. Verse 7. Verse 7. Verse 7 to 11. Now that's gold from Come Follow Me. They want us to look at that and just, oh well, you can figure it out. Verse 7. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 8. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Verse 9, or what man is there of you, who, if his son asks bread, will give him a stone? Verse 10, or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? Verse 11, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Beautiful. Yes, so um, yeah, we were having a talk about this in the car too, my husband and I. And um, clearly, he's saying in verse 7 that we should ask. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And um, I'd like to hear your thoughts about this one. Um, because, like, I asked my Christian, you know, my husband a Christian, if we got a flat, flat tire like in our car right now, would you go and ask for help? And he goes, no. I said, why not? And he said, 
because I don't need it. I've got a tire in the car. I've got everything I need to change the tire. So um, he brought up a good point. It's just like um, you would only ask for the help if you really need it. It's not like, uh, you know, just casually just going to ask him for whatever. But it's after using all effort or your effort before you go and ask him. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah. Well, that was just our discussion that we had, my husband and I, as we, we, <laughs> we went for a, a little ride today to the beach. And it was just a bit of pondering for us, um, you know, to, to figure out what that's really trying to ask, tell us. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. But I, think, I guess it's saying that if you really do need the help, he is ready to, to give it freely. He is ready to give it to you freely. But I don't think it's, a, it's like this if we exceeded all our efforts. And, and this is another example. It's like for us, and we've had these situations like this, is when we don't have food, to feed our family and you get that anxious and anxiety kind of feeling inside you and you like you think oh gosh you're waiting for the miracles to come inside you to think how are we going to feed the family tonight what can we do and just this can apply to all the other stressful things that are in our minds and we think oh man what am i going to do what am i going to do now you can sit there and stress yourself out about it after you and if or you can go and try and find a way of, of sorting it out and you know it could be as easy as just like you know my husband i go and ask my husband what should we do and just talking about it that's kind of like exceeding our own effort before we go and ask the lord you know and there's been a few times when we've had to humble ourselves and you know sometimes it can be an embarrassing thing we have had to go to ask our bishop for groceries and things like that we have to humble ourselves and go to him and ask when we need assistance we also have to humble ourselves when we go to the lord and ask for something because you know it's like making a mockery of him if we just go and ask willy-nilly and like not even feel, be grateful for it for his help we need to exert all our effort first before we go and ask him but he says clearly ask and you shall receive and it'll be a piece of cake he will give it you know uh, Belinda, self-sufficient we are commanded. However, if you have exerted all, all, then you can ask for whatever, literally ask anything. Yes, absolutely. I love how you're both learning as you go. Humility. <laughs> and it is that because uh, I think it's, it's the partnership in your marriage that kind of like helps you sort, figure things out. And I would only go see, and I exert my effort too before I go and ask my husband. I would think, you know, with all the wealth of and skill that I have in my mind and in my heart, I can figure out how to solve many things. I can usually do that on my own without, you know, bothering my husband about it, if it's not necessary. But he knows I'll only come to him if I, I have exerted my efforts in trying to fix it. And, you know, it's not just him. I also go to my kids and, and we discuss things too. And as adults, that's pretty awesome. It's so awesome to have that help and to be able to discuss with one another. And yes, it is about being self-sufficient as a family. We've got ourselves in a lot of situations, really sticky ones. And my kids have come forward after I have asked. You know, don't be those prideful ones that think you can fix it all on your own. I've learned that on this journey, that you need to work together with your family and humble yourself many times, yeah? It keeps you... Um, it keeps your family safe, yeah? When you take heed to that, people, take your heed to that. And I like this part here, um, in verse 12. Am I up to verse 12? If he remain evil... No, okay, I better just go back to verse 8. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. So you need to look. You need to be engaged and look. It's just like when I took a photo of my dog this morning. You know, that this dog can look for food. If he wants food, he'll find it. And, um, you know, it's, it depends on that desire. What kind of desire do we have to find it? Seeking. What kind of seeking are we, you know? What is the intent of our, of our hearts? Do we really want it that bad? Or do you want it to, you know, fall in your lap kind of thing? 
there's been some times too when my husband and I have to, you know, go to a, a food bank and, you know, we just humble ourselves. We don't care. you got to do it for your family. you got to do it. And um, no shame. Um, you will get your answers though when you ask. When you ask the Lord after you're exerted. You know, most of the time the, the message that we get when we do ask the Lord is just humble yourself. And he might even put someone in our mind and not, not even have to, you know, sometimes we've not had to tell anybody. And the next minute we've got these, but we do ask him. And next minute there's like this man at our door with all these bags of shopping. And, you know, we don't ask because sometimes we get prideful and we, we like say, no, I think we've, we've had too much help. You know, if you just... If you have that desire of something so badly, oh, anyway, you know what? The Lord will chastise you. He will chastise you. <laughs> he will. And he'll say, humble yourself. Humble yourself and ask. You will know. Uh, verse 9. What man is there of you who, if his son asks bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Verse 11, if ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts. Oh, I think I've read that, eh? Um, unto your children, how much more shall your Father, who is in heaven, give the things to them that ask him? Okay, verse 12 is the verse I like. Therefore, I'll read it slowly. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. I'll read that again. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would, do, ye would that man should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law of the prophets. And this kind of like got me thinking. Um, sometimes we, oh, I know that me, I'm guilty. Sometimes there's like an expectation of what people should do to you. And when you have those moments of those that expectation, it's kind of like related to judgment, hey, when you're judging others. Like that person hasn't done this and that person hasn't done that. And why haven't they done it? You know, I've found myself saying things like that. And, um, and you know, sometimes they just don't know. Maybe if you showed them by, by example, like do it to them first, then they'll, they'll learn how to, yeah? It's just my thoughts about that one. That stood out to me, you know why? Because I can relate. I can relate. All right, let's go. Next verse, 13. Enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, which leadeth to destruction, and many there be who go, and thereat. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be, be that. Few there be that find it. What's he, what do you think he's trying to say here? Stay on course? You know, go straight? <laughs> go straight to the gate? <laughs> Alright, verse 15. Uh, so here we are talking about false prophets. And he says, verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. I love that. Do you say? I love it. Um, so, a question to ask is probably, who are those false prophets of today? Who are the false prophets of today? And how has, how is having a true prophet, prophet of benefit to us today? How has that helped us, having a true prophet? And, um, yeah, identify who the, kind of like, give people... Well, this is what I think. I think we help each other when we can identify who the false prophets are of today. Yes, we focus on our true prophet, and I guess every um, everyone else has the potential of being a false prophet. Does that make sense? Because there are some uh, false prophets that look quite, uh, you know, flattering with their words, but their hearts are far from me. That kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, let's carry on. Verse 16, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes 
of thorns or figs of thistles. Verse 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Make sense? 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verse 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Uh, sorry, my volume is stuck. I'm trying to sort it out. Otherwise, replay. Oh, no, cuz. Okay, can you actually hear me? Can you hear me? Let me know if you can't. Because I might be too far. It actually might be me. I'll bring you closer. Hey? Oh, any more closer. You're off the table. Can you hear me now? Okay, I'll read that part again. Um, and this is how you identify what is a false prophet and what is a true prophet. And it says here, Good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verse 19, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Verse 20, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know, ye shall know them. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. So... Um, yeah, their fruits are the things that they say, the things that they do. You, sh you shall know that they are good by their fruits and what they say and do to, to help us, okay? So, um, yeah, I guess that's what it's saying. What is good fruit, people? Okay, let's carry on. All right, verse 21, here we go, we're nearly finished, okay? Verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, who is, who is in heaven. Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Verse 23, Excuse me. And then when I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So I guess he's talking about the fake people. Verse 24, therefore, whoso heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. Mm, I get it. Verse 25. And the rain descended, and the floods came up, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, that house. And it fell not, and it was founded upon a rock. Okay, so if you build your foundation upon a rock, it will stay firm. So I think he's just talking about the truth in which you build yourself on. You know, the fruits. If it's a good fruit, it, you know, it will be strong, like the rock. Okay, so, and, you know, anyway, I'll carry on. Verse 26, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward, eh? And the rain descended and the floods came up and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell. Uh, and great was the fall of it. Okay, so... I guess, I think you will have your own understanding of what he, you think he's trying to say, but what he says about false prophets, he says, beware of them, because they can be very enticing, they can have all the flattering words for you, they can, um, you know, make themselves look amazing, and wonderful, and follow me, they can say, follow me, follow me, and you will follow them, because you think that they are right, and they, you think that they are true. But what they could do is lead you to a, a downward spiral, you know? But the things we talked about today, judgment, you know, judging others. If you hear them saying things like that, you know, in a non, like gossiping and things like that, you know, there, there's no good fruit there. But if you hear them say encouraging, uplifting things, you know, even like our prophet today, he, you know, there's not um, a harmful bone in his body and he's so beautiful and he does encourage and he does uplift his people. You know, he traveled the Pacific just to go and see the, the members there and uplift them. 
And he did this. This is the thing that stood out to me about it, is that he did it all before COVID happened. And he was able to give those members the boost that they needed before this great trial that is, you know, we are experiencing today. You know, and what a boost that is. If you watch any videos about our prophet, you will see how he just enlightens people and the you, people feel the spirit when he is in their presence so um is that a good fruit absolutely but beware of the false prophets they come in what does it say <sighs> who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves so it could be people like um well this is just me i'm just saying um so who comes to mind when you think of following someone who is amazing in your eyes, just absolutely amazing. Um, and they may come in beautiful apparel and they may also um, have the flattering words. They may do things that you really like and you start following them. So social media is just absolutely full of them. And it could be just with people that you think are you know amazing then you like them and then next minute they're telling you to do something crazy that's the ravening wolf uh inside of them you know so just be careful so i would say it's people like uh, it could be people like celebrities um politicians you know people who you know you uh who entice you you know so be careful they could lead you down to a downward spiral and he says here, Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. If it is a good fruit, then you know that person is good. If it is a corrupt tree, it will bear corrupt fruit or evil fruit, okay? You should know. Um, I think you would have the feeling. Um, hmm. And it talks about what happens if you build your foundation upon uh, someone who is a false prophet. There you go build his house upon the sand and the rain came tumbling down and the floods came up you know you know the whole story you know the song <laughs> what happens in the house on the sand when bang is that your house <laughs> yeah just something to consider okay so that's our chapter for today peoples it's only 24 27 verses um we're doing well what time did i start i must have started 4 30. We're doing well okay so what stands out to you today i'd love to hear your comments of what you think about today's um reading and what were your favorite verses so you get most welcome to pop that in uh if you come in and watch the relay uh, the replay um please let us know what verse really stood out to you and i'll share a little something about what stood out to me i actually i mean i'm i'm being a bit biased today and i do have a favorite my favorite is the one about the judgment and I'll, the reason why I'll, I'll tell you about it is I actually feel more prompted to talk about that one. Um, although the Come Follow Me wants us to talk about seeking good things from Heavenly Father. Um, actually, I'll try, I can tie in some good things about the, the way that I want to go. Okay, so the verse that I like, I love, is verse 3 and 4. It's about considering what is in your eyes. So, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? And as we went through the poll today, we did have some good answers there about judgment um, and whether you can judge and whether you, or whether you shouldn't be judging at all. Well, um, I think you get the idea, Matthew 7, that you shouldn't judge at all. But as we're looking at the judgment, and, and even um, Belinda, you brought it up, um, and Moroni, Moroni 7, that there is such a thing as good judgment and righteous judgment. And I'll give you an example of it. So in my notes I've got here, yes, judging righteously. And um, this is how judging right righteously works for me personally, okay? For you it might be different. Um, but this is just to help you understand what kind of... See, this is a good fruit that I'm talking about. When you see that it is good, you feel it and there is a good outcome. But if the intent is evil, then only evil or, you know, corruption can come from it. 
So the one I'm talking about is judging righteously. And this, these are just some bullet points that I made before we came on. So the first thing that happens to me, like I'll, I'll go. So it says here, spirit tells me or chooses someone and they stand out to me. Okay, so this is how it works for me. Uh, the spirit tells me or chooses someone and they stand out to me for some reason. Like if I'm in a room or I see someone's comments or I'm at church and there's just one person that stands out to me. It's kind of like the spirit is encouraging me to like um, engage with that person in some way. And as I do, um, it says this, spirit fills my heart to reach out to them. And this has happened and I have seen someone and i won't mention their name but there was someone the, the very first time i saw them i knew there was something about that person and but i just left it okay so the spirit fills my heart to reach out. this has happened many times it's not just the one occasion like even when i have been been a seminary teacher there's students that walk into my class and of all the students for the day i would find somebody that just needed that extra and the spirit would lead me to them. And I would, uh, or even when I'm preparing my lessons, I just have one person in mind and it's as if the spirit is telling me to, you know, help that one person. Many times, many times this has happened and it's still happening today. And this is how I know whether it is a good fruit or not, because I absolutely know it's, it's not about judging the person, it's about seeing what their needs are. There is a difference, okay? Uh, how can I minister to the person after I identify the person? How can I minister to that person in a way that I can, a realistic way that I can? Um, so, yeah, it's just a summary of all those things. And what else do I do? So many, so many are suffering in silence. And we have work to do. With righteous judgment, we can do it better. Leadership, oh, so the examples I have here. Like for me personally, it has been in my other leadership callings. Me as a mother, I've been able to minister to others. When I judge righteously as a mother, I have been able to help my children because sometimes they don't want to talk about it. But that spirit of discernment, as Jazz talked about in the poll, it does really help. Um, also, discernment as a teacher, I've been able to do that as a friend, just reaching out to someone that you think um, just needs someone, and just a little cheering up or something like that, um, family members, um, yeah, we can do it with, uh, yeah, the spirit is a true teacher. When it comes to judging righteously, the spirit is a true teacher. I think we all have that gift of discernment to do that. Um, but the Spirit is a true teacher, whether you can or who you should do it to. So that's the only way that I see, oh, I don't know, judging righteously, that, that's the example that I'll give you to ponder about what is righteous, righteous judging. And please, if you, oh, Yeah, I'll encourage you to read that article that I post about judgment, okay? If you're not sure. Um, but in closing, I'd just like to share an experience I can share about judging righteously. Oh, Lehi's home. Oh, yeah, Lehi and Nick. Awesome. Come in, boys. Um... Have I been able to help someone through righteous judgment? I do it all the time. I've been doing it for many years. Um, but it was my callings that kind of like gave me that um, encouragement. Hi, Nick. Um, that encouragement to, to do it properly. Um, Oreo, don't do that. Oh, it's just biting me, high friends. Um... Have I changed anyone's life by doing that? Um, I'm just trying to think of a, an example of making a righteous judgment on, on someone that has helped. 
Yeah, there's been a few. I'm trying to think of one that would really um, come forward. <laughs> okay, let me tell you one thing, okay? This is um, something that comes to mind right now. I've, I've, I've helped a lot of people through making righteous judgments and I, I believe there's only through connecting myself with the Lord and keeping myself as a clean as vessel just for him to, to help me in this work. But I, I just want to share something. Um, there is one person that um, I find very difficult to to help, and I may think that I can help all the people in the world. You know, I have the intention to do that, but the one that I find very difficult to help is really, um, yeah, my husband. And when it comes to helping him, I really need that gift of discernment to be there, not as his teacher, not as a seminary teacher, not as a member, not as anything, but someone that just really cares. Because you get in this, into this pattern where you think, oh, I, I just know how to help people. Well, guess what? You will have your challenges. And when you have those challenges, then you've got to check yourself even more on your judgment. That it's not personal judgment upon them. Uh, does that make sense? Something I just learned, the very act of discernment is judgment. So we're judging a lot every day. Yes, we are. Uh, whether they be righteous or not depends on how we discern. Yes, it does depend, it depend on how we... Um, and they need to be... For, see, the intention of righteous judgment is to do good. You know, if there is a good fruit you will know that it is a right. Fonda, let me know your understanding. <laughs> I've been, you know what? To be honest, I've been doing it for many, 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 many years. And it's something that you have to do, especially when you're like, for the, my years as being a youth leader, it's something that you need to do um, constantly because, you know what? The youth are not going to tell you. They're not going to tell you openly unless they trust you. And that is usually something that um, you you earn. You really need to be listening to them. So there's a, there's a lot behind it. It's not just like, okay, I'm going to make a righteous judgment today. Mm -mm. It doesn't work like that. And it also comes from the intention of your heart. Do you actually care about these kids? And for me, most of the time, I was able to help them and really assist them is, is because they let me. And it is, a, it is, um, it is, an, and to me, I don't think it's a judgment. It's observation. I don't think it's a judging someone and say, "Okay, I'm righteously going to judge you." Now, please tell me everything that's happening in your life. Mm -mm, no way, it does not happen that way. Um, you, it is an observation. I'd say it's more of an observation. Well, for me, it has been. Um, sorry, Auntie, I've just had to pop out, but I'll come back later. Okay, that's fine, love, and watch the replay again. Yes, that's fine. Put in my thoughts, very good. Yes, put in your own thoughts what you think about it because it's something that we really need to understand better because we are dealing with a lot of... Um, you remember, this is what I said to my husband the other night. Satan does not sleep. He is working hard. While you're figuring out what righteous judgment is, some poor kid is struggling you know like sort it out and if you're really into the business of helping others it wouldn't be like a checklist kind of thing it'd be about listening it'd be about you know spending time it'd be about sacrificing your own time it'd be about sacrificing the time that you usually spend with your family it'd be about putting aside things for this person it's not about, a, you know, a righteous judgment is, I don't like to think of it as like you're ticking, you know, we're going to find out if this person needs righteous judgment. Mm -mm. I think to me it's more about just loving that person more than anything. If you really have intention to care for them and nourish them, it is something, it is the works of the Spirit, honestly. I don't think we have the right to do any kind of judgment upon anyone else. I think the Spirit is the one who will guide us on what we need to do. And the thing, our pattern is that we have to be ready 
just be ready. You know, if we're not ready, if our heart is already full of something else and we're distracted by whatever in the world, you're going to miss that opportunity to help them. And, you know, a few times this has happened, and this is why I've come forward and, and been a lot bolder in what I say today, because, there, for, an, for example, I don't know these things are going to happen. I don't know. It just happens. But there was um, a situation... Once it, there's two situations actually where I used to post a lot of stuff on my um, uh, my personal page, you know, scriptures, the whole lot. I I used to I, I do it all here now. Um, and there's a few people that came forward to me and private messaged me and they say, oh wow, I like to know more. And uh, I always thought, oh no, I'm going to offend them because I I already judge them. I judge them because of they're in my old life. They're a part of my previous party life. And I think, oh, I couldn't possibly share anything with them. I couldn't, because I had already judged them that they won't understand. And so I didn't share anything with them. I didn't continue with, you know, that discussion with them. And I just thought, okay, you know, if they come back again, all good. But now I'm learning to be bold and acting on, you know, those promptings and just saying things that I need to say. And it doesn't matter. Not being ashamed to, to say it is... You know, you empty yourself out that you can be this willing vessel in the hands of the Lord. And it's not about assessing them. Oh, are they ready yet? Mm, are they ready to hear? Should I say it now? Well, guess what? I missed my opportunity to say it to them. Two people that I knew who were so interested in, in hearing more about the Book of Mormon, I just stopped because I thought that I thought that they weren't ready, and yet I felt the promptings. I felt it, you know, be brave to share. But because they were from my past, I thought, nah, they weren't ready, and you know what? Before you know it, both of them passed away. These are two separate people, different people. And um, I, I made the wrong judgment. And I think it's not about making judgment, it's about acting on the spirit. In your observations, you feel something, but you're not acting on it. That's what it's been like for me. And so I've learned now, just act on the prompting. Be brave. Just tap on that person's shoulder. Or send them a message and just say what it is that you need to say. And so I'm learning to be like that now and just to act on it. If, you know, I get this person come in my mind and I think, oh, I think the Lord is, uh, why is that person in my head? And so I just message them. And if you think about it long enough, you'll know what is right. And if you ponder it long enough, you'll get the answer. You know, it's not about our personal answer. It's about the Lord's judgment. And he uses us to help him. The Lord has said for us to judge righteously, we need to do so under the influence. Uh, we need to do so under the influence and direction of the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that is the only way it works. Amen. <laughs> that is the only way it works. Yes, we don't want to miss these opportunities. We don't want to miss these opportunities. And you know, when the Spirit, you know, this, I already know this. The Spirit tells the truth of all things. You cannot deny it. So when He tells you to do something, you do it. And when He tells you to say something, you say it. You don't need to make sense of it. You don't need to think, oh, hang on, maybe, maybe. Uh, they're not ready. Act on it. Who cares if you look stupid? You know, that's what something I was thinking. Oh, I'm going to look stupid if I say this to them. And they're just going to mock me. And now I'm to the point where I don't even care if they mock me. I don't care what they, if they even have an opinion of, uh, of me or they're judging me. I don't care. I, I'm past that point. And I think it's just come to a time where we really need to be bold as alma was you know just bold in what we say and even though it's gonna hurt just say it just do it when the lord prompts just do it you will know that it's right and when you speak truth you know that whoever's hearing will know it is true cannot deny it but i'm learning you know and the people that i find it very hard to talk to about these things and be bold one, my husband, and two, my children. Two, close to my heart. 
but very necessary, you know, and, but, but it won't be your own personal judgment if you are in tune with the Spirit, you know. You are boldly declaring truth. Why, why are you so worried about it? <laughs> that it's going to be right or wrong or whether that person, you judge that person and think, oh, no, they're not ready. Look, they're still doing this. They're still doing that. Or I don't think they're ready, you know, because they could be still, you know, drinking alcohol or smoking cigarettes. They won't give it up, you know, so you say nothing. I mean, the spirit is always right. You just say it. There should be no personal judgment put across to anybody, even to yourself. It should be all done by the discernment of the spirit. We have no power to go and judge others. And the final judgment, you know, that will be done by our Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and in between now and then, um, be like a young child, easy to be guided by the Spirit, like that one, guys. <laughs> that is so true. Just be like a child, easy. And oh, if only we could be, eh? if only we could be, just be humble like a child. Beautiful, I love that. And when we feel that we're not being that child, um, submissive. To Heavenly Father and especially to the Spirit because you know the, the Spirit is frontline <laughs> you know he deals with us daily he is our constant companion and he will only work miracles in our lives if we are clean vessels like a child you know and when he's talking to us is he like oh how many times do I have to tell this girl <laughs> You know, are we listening? That's the thing. Are we listening to those promptings? And these days, you know, I'm starting to hear them all the time. You know, first thing when I wake up, I hear the prompting. Okay, that person comes into my mind. Quickly message that person, see if they're okay. Another person will come to my mind. And this morning it was about my calling. Quickly message message someone to, to organize that. And they, they come quickly. You know what? If you're quick to act on it, it is done. Because you're not, you, you are just a vessel. You're not the, the person that is actually doing the judging. You're not the one that needs to discern this or that. The only person that can judge anything in our lives is the Lord. And, and only He can work in us. You know? We are just the messengers. Or we're just the thing, the people that come behind you and say, Come on, get back on track. You know, get back on the path. That is who we are. We're, we're, you know, if anyone can do the healing, it is, it's only our Saviour. You know, it is Him. Don't be confused. We cannot pass that kind of judgment on another person. <laughs> Watch out for the big beam. <laughs> Watch out for the beam, people. You know, amazing, right? Amazing. You learn something new every day. Um, and yeah, that is our purpose, to declare truth. Not declare our own opinion of truth, but to declare truth. Beautiful, because it's been amazing. We're still learning, absolutely, we're still learning. The more you obey, the more you will receive. Yes, absolutely. And um, I'm even telling my husband too today, as we were sitting at the beach, I said, I need to be a clean vessel. I need to, and he knows it too. So he supports me in what I'm doing and supporting me in doing the right thing. You know, we don't watch TV anymore at night. We only watch uh, Tabernacle Choir. We listen to the choir singing and it's, you know, we're trying to create that environment, you know, to be that child, to, to be humble, submissive. And you know, the Lord daily is giving us challenges, you know, like, how are you two going to, I don't know, organize your rent this week? I don't know. How are we going to do that? And you know what? He just always comes through. And doing these things, working together on these trials that we have, it keeps us where we need to be, <laughs> like a child. Humble and submissive only to him. And he guides us daily. 
and uh, there are some things of the world that will distract us and like take us off course and think oh how can we possibly do that and then by some miracle he works in us and just makes miracles happen honestly i cannot even say how much he has just i don't know he just makes everything possible everything you know everything that you possibly think could stress you out and bring anxiety to your life he has just wiped it away and sometimes before it even happens he just comes along and wipes it away you know he just does beautiful things and and it's only by faith we can see these things too be humble and submissive like a child so you can actually see it you can see the miracles you can see the good fruits which he talks of in this chapter you can see the good fruit you can feel the good fruit you can you know it is evident in your life completely and sometimes he he blesses us too much you know there was one week we had just so much food it was just like oh my gosh and then like we didn't buy it and he just it's, it's as if this happens you know he just takes that worry away from us so we can focus on what is what matters most and for us i know that work is working with our family working with each other as husband and wife and working with others who i need who is like everybody you know lehi's doing his part yeah lehi's gone with his friend you know the friend that he brought home the other night he's out there hanging with his friend you know with with everybody's effort you know my kids are not perfect we're not perfect at all as a family um, but my husband and I we take things quite seriously when it comes to the Lord we have, we are so in debt to him so in debt and every time he blesses us we're like thinking more effort more effort we need to put more effort in and um, this is just the way he is merciful and you just know where you stand with him you just know where you stand you know when you just become submissive to him everything just makes sense um it, it, it's not a haze you, you you believe everything everything that is said it just even my studies you know my studies are coming down to like oof, okay yeah i got that and i read a talk and i'm like okay i understand that and it just comes to your mind and in, and in your heart you already know it's true you know and sometimes you think mm, how am i gonna what am i gonna possibly do with these hard decisions and then you get to a point where you just have faith and empty yourself out you know completely and no, stop doing that stop filling your heart out with or every anxiety or every stress or anything like that why do that to yourself why punish yourself empty yourself out let him love you let him guide you let him tell you how to help a sheep and then go and do it easy you know just do that it is you know you, you just i can't even explain the journey that we are on and <laughs> constant constant you know the thing that really um makes me very grateful although my husband is going through his trials and things he does not stop this work you know and his message to you know one of the leaders at church wanted to see him his message to him was i'm going through some demons i've got some demons i'm trying to deal with my family are helping me and you know but my relationship with the Lord is great and you would think with for someone that is like going for a hard time would immediately just cut the connection with the Lord because it's just too hard and I know that there are people who actually express that to me they're just taking time away because it's just too much right now but for him to say that he is, you know, he has great faith in the Lord. 
Patrick tells me he understands his journey. He understands it fully. And he's not going to give up. That's what that tells me. And we're going to do this together because it is a daily, it is a, not a struggle, it's not a struggle. It's a journey, okay? Journey for learning. <laughs> um, hey guys, uh, your faith and love for the Saviour is so amazing. It's why you are blessed. Awesome example for us, Kelly. I trust Him immensely, daily, every single day. My prayers to Him are sincere. I, I must trust Him. I know that's why He sent me out here all this way, because if I'm back in New Zealand at home, I got all my family around me. I'm comfortable as. <laughs> but if I'm here, I need to rely on him. And it's, yeah, it's a daily effort. It is a daily effort. And that's what I'm willing to take. I've learned enough. I've learned enough for me to know that and understand that. I'm willing. All good. Bring it on. Um, but I'm very grateful for this journey that I'm on and I'm grateful for my family. You know, I love my kids. You know, they're not perfect at all, but I still love them. And I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm perfect too. I'm far from it. And uh, this is what I understand about it. Through my studies this year, of all years, this year has been one that is just, I, like, I don't know, it's just... I don't know, it's just something different about it. It's m maybe 100 times more meaningful. I'm not too sure why, but uh, every year has been meaningful for me as I have taught and studied and, and so forth. My kids know it. They know. If I'm just studying, I'm studying. Nothing's going to stop me. But this year has just been more meaningful and more purposeful, uh, especially when it comes to my family. I'm learning to understand uh, I'm not perfect. And for me to try and make my children be perfect, not right at all. I just be the example. Um, um, but, you know, these are my thoughts. And, and like I said before, I don't know what I'm going to say in the live. And I just rely on the Spirit to, to share the message or what comes to my heart. Um, but everything I do share, I know 110 a million times percent that these things are true. And everything that we talk about in here, I understand it to be true. I know it. I feel it. I feel it because I, I live it. I, I live it until I understand it. And then I continue to, um, to, I don't know, just keep living it. So my children know it. Like I said, the thing with Lehi and his friend, you know, I just, just didn't realize I was being that kind of example to him. That he, he's doing it now. He's only 13. And he's already reaching out to his friends and that. And, and you know, it's, it's just, I have no control of it. It's all the Lord. And it's the Spirit. And I'm just really grateful to witness it. And I'm grateful that I'm still here today to do it. And I'm taking better care of myself. Um, and I even said that to my husband too. My health is not well. I'm good to nobody. I can't help the Lord do his work. So I'm watching everything that I eat, everything that I drink. I'm, I'm getting better sleep. I'm getting sun. I'm getting a bit of fresh air. I'm in a happy mood each day. Um, all these things prepare us to feel that spirit. It's not just one thing, not one element, just spiritual. No, it's physical, mental, spiritual. You know, I don't have any depression. I do probably have anxiety over little things, but I talk to you guys about it, and that's how I let it let it go. I talk about it. That's the key, cuz you're living it. Practice what you preach, and it shows. Thanks for your example and your families. I just always think that I need to be reliant on the Lord, and it's... It's not something that I joke around with. It's, it's something I take quite seriously. And I need his help so much that I take the Lord quite seriously with what he says. And I do try to live every principle as best I can. But I'm not perfect at all. I do make a lot of mistakes. But I learn from them too. And I think all my life I'll be making mistakes. And that's okay. Sometimes I think we get a bit overworked with 
and, and overwhelmed with guilt um, and shame when we do something wrong. You know what? Just admit it and then correct it. Get back on the path. Um, recover well. Recover well, people. Um, and just, just in closing, I'd just like to share. Recently, I'm, I am dealing with some people who are going through severe hard times. And you know what? It's not me saving them. It's actually the spirit. I remember I'm just the vessel that just says what they need to hear and I'm, I'm very grateful for these experiences they're teaching me so much about how the Lord works with his people you know how the Lord cares for us I've seen it and when people are ready then he can help them too and it also helps me understand how he can help me and my family and how to have patience and how to think that you know nothing and I do know nothing I know nothing. I just trust the Lord immensely. Um, in closing, you know, these, this whole week is full of the Savior's words for us to, to become better disciples, true disciples. This is what he's saying to us. Live these things. Live these things I'm teaching you. And... You know, they're a way for us to live. And I'm grateful for that guidance because, man, I was doing a real mud job when I was on my own. You know, my husband and I, before we took this journey, man, we were making 10 million kinds of mistakes in our youth. Stupid. But we're on a better path now. And trust the Lord is all I can say. Um, anyway, I'll close by... Please keep sharing any insights and that that you and experiences. Please, I like to hear your experiences too. Um, please feel free to share whatever you're comfortable with. But in closing, I've got an hour to like I I got to cook dinner and then I've got to go to the chapel or no to our activity tonight and um, things to do. <laughs> um, but in closing, I like to be you my testimony that I know God lives. I know completely that he lives. I know that he is the, he is the everything. <laughs> He's the everything in my life. And, and I'm, I'm really grateful for him sacrificing his son for us. You know, that's, that's a hard thing to do. If I had to sacrifice any of my children, for somebody else, I don't know if I could do it. But he, he did it freely for us. And you know what? It's a perfect plan. You know, stick to the plan. And you cannot go wrong. As best you can. Um, I love our Savior. He's beautiful. And I love our prophet. He only speaks truth. And if you have doubt about him, consider the things that he says and the things that he does and his counsel to us if you live these things just give it a go live it and you will see whether he is true or not you know and um i'm grateful for the gospel completely and i love you all and i humbly say these things in the name of jesus christ amen amen we did it oh my gosh we went over time i'll say the prayer thank you everyone for joining me and those in new zealand I understand it's very late over there. It's probably 10 o'clock or something, but I love you all. And great. thank you for joining me. And okay, enjoy the rest of your night, guys. I'm gonna say the prayer and then I gotta get out of here. All right. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank thee for this beautiful time we've had to come together and learn and share with each other. We're grateful for the beautiful spirit that has been here with us to teach us and direct us and guide us. And help us understand these principles that we may be able to apply them in our daily lives and and be able to be the example to others of uh, true discipleship and help us to learn in our um, daily experiences and be able to uplift one another and encourage each other to do what is right forgive us father for our many wrongdoings and shortcomings that we may be able to strengthen ourselves in our faith and in our works 
may love one another and save each other. Grateful Father for all these blessings that was blessed us with them. Grateful for our Savior Jesus Christ. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you. We'll see you later, guys. See you tomorrow.